Hey guys, a bit squid here and welcome to another Playmaker tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be looking at uh, multi-direction movement. So in another tutorial I did, which I'll put the card in the right hand corner above, um, we looked at uh, basically movement where it's moved from left to right. Now in this one, we're going to do it so we can actually move in all directions. So I've got a little basic scene here. I've just put a, a square sprite colored green to represent grass. I've got a tree, got some rocks, and you notice these have uh, box colliders, but not covering the whole thing. So this will actually let us go behind the rocks and then for the tree, a box collider around the trunk of the tree. <coughs> okay. And then obviously my player here. Okay, and my player is just being represented by this purple 2D cylinder or capsule. Okay, so uh, this is really simple to do. So what we're going to do is first of all we need to actually give our player um, a collider. Always best you technically don't need to do it if it's for this, but it's always best to add a collider. So add a polygon collider because of the different shape. Okay, and then I'm also going to add a rigid body 2D. <clears throat> okay, now what we do need to make sure we do is on the rigid body 2D, set gravity scale to zero. And we're gonna freeze rotation on the Z, which is under constraints here. Now, I'll show you what will happen if we don't have it on zero, but we'll just build our FSM first. Now, this is really simple. Just like our two-directional movement, we just need two FSMs. And this one we'll call translate. And then the second we will call get axis. And we'll just add a finished transition to both of them. Okay, translate and an extra event is to make sure that it will transition between the two events. We'll add an extra event here and then a get axis. We need two get axis. Okay, so for translate, we need to give it uh, some variables to save to or to load from. So let's start with here first. So for get axis, we'll say we need to go to horizontal. And I want to set that to 8. And then store. Okay, so I'll create a new variable here called player. Player x. So I've already actually got that <clears throat> from a past tutorial. So I'm just going to bang that one on here. Player X. And then for uh, get axis here, we're going to put vertical. We're going to match that with an eight for the multiplier. And then you create a new global variable and call that player Y. I've got that already. You can call it whatever you want. <clears throat> And then we'll go to send event finished. And then where it says here, X, we are going to choose player X. And here for player Y, choose player Y. And next from event finished. <clears throat> We're going to hit play. And that, will, that is it. It will basically just now move around the scene. We can go in like basically in this case because of my keyboard I've only got the four directional keys so we can go uh, 12 directions eight directions <clears throat> so you see so I can go behind the tree hiding behind the rocks in front of the rocks like that Okay, and that's that. Now, if you don't set gravity scale, say you keep gravity scale as one, 
what'll happen is you're just gonna drop off just like that and yeah so that's why it's important in if you're doing like a top-down kind of game you want this to make sure it is zero and then you'll get the full be able to move on the whole screen so yeah and that is it really nice and simple um, so if you found this video helpful please hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more tutorials by me um, <clears throat> Yeah, and if you need any help, any requests for tutorials, there is the comments down below, or you can join my Discord and leave a comment or a post, whatever you want to call it, a message in my Discord server in the request channels. And until next time, 8-Bit Squid out.